All right, there's my notification that I've gone live. Hey guys, I'm back with another mail call. I think this is episode three, episode three or episode four. I don't think episode three I called mail call. So either way, here we are at mail call doing this again. I have two packages to unbox today. One from the Goulet Pen Company of just some uh, accessories and paper and stickers. That's always fun. And I have another one from David Nishimura. So not the last time I will be purchasing with David Nishimura. David Murphy, good evening. I mean, it's not that late here in California, but, and hello, Miss Marilyn Darling. Thanks for coming in. This is fun. Wow, already five people watching. That's cool. Welcome, you guys. Like I said, I have a little box from the Goulet Pen Company. This is cool. They have their own packaging now, which is really nice. I want my own boxes. I'll send you guys stuff. Just have a rag on the side of it or something. That'd be fun. And then I have a package from David Nishimura. This is really exciting. Also up there with one of the most expensive pens that I bought to date in that package. So we will check that out. Hi, Bosco. Thanks for watching from Brazil. Kuya, uh, thanks for watching from Chicago. Hey, Greg, you know what's in that package. <laughs> Hi, journaling with Jessica. Hi, thanks for watching, you guys. Thanks for checking this out. Um, grab a drink or relax. If you're under the age of 21, then don't have a drink. Maybe have a soda or something. But I am having Fear Movie Lions, a hazy double IPA from Stone Brewing. It's a good, solid eight and a half percent so get tanked with me it'll be fun like a real pen show getting hammered at the pen show so cool well you know seven people that's good enough for me i'm gonna start we're gonna unbox this box first from let's see oh you're waiting for panda express that sounds really good i was just gonna eat waffles for dinner <laughs> man panda express sounds really good though and we'll see as long as i'm not drunk too drunk to drive then maybe i will get panda express as well that sounds really good david nothing wrong with playing with some playing cards i um like i said i still have like 300 decks of playing cards i can always send you a bunch cool we're gonna get into this goulet box right now so let's... really fast shipping actually from goulet two-day shipping Free two-day shipping. My little sheet here. Get that off the side. Yes. So I bought a bunch of little tiny notebooks. These are the uh, Nemasine, the Maruman little notebooks. The tiny little ones we got uh at the last orange county not the last orange county pen show uh the last the second to last orange county pen hangout uh we got a bunch of free stuff from them these are awesome their paper's really nice it's really thin but it, it just really retains you know it's got really nice yellow cover page on it i just like these uh and i got a bunch of little rhodia dot pads i like these little ones i can carry them around and put them in a pocket these little like look how tiny that is just little things to take notes on or write things down or uh I i've been playing with this paper a lot um really really good paper so they have a bunch of different sizes of their notebooks and stuff too the other reason why i needed more paper is uh one of my coworkers at disneyland i bought her a little fountain pen so i bought her a Kabiko sport in blue I got her a bunch of different colors and stuff, and then I wanted to get her some paper as well because, you know, with fountain pens, you shouldn't use any old paper. So let's get her some notebooks. Thank you, Brenda, for packing my order. So I got that. Of course, I got some cute stickers. So I got the Corgi and the, uh, looks like the Pilot, the Pilot Custom 823, yeah, says it on there. There you go, a little Corgi sticker for my water bottle, for my work water bottle. 
And I got a Goulet pen cast sticker as well for my water bottle. So that's super fun. Oh, they sent me another little Goulet pen sticker. Orange ink spot. Oh, yes. So they always send a little piece of candy. So uh, they gave me the chocolate Tootsie Pop, which is awesome. Chocolate's my favorite of those. How did they know? They, they didn't know. So that works out. Let's see here. I don't want to miss anything from you guys. There we go. Another little notebook. This is the A5 size, but it opens like this, which I really like. And these are blank. I, don't, I think they were out of dot grid on them, but blank, I will take. I think this is what I'm gonna give to my, my friend from work. Or maybe I'll give her one of these Rhodia dot pads. Rhodia's just got such good paper. I use it for everything. Whoa, this is way smaller than I thought it was gonna be. This is awesome. So I am running out of room in my pen case. Wow, okay. So I have the I have the Galen Leather 40 pen case, and I'm running out of space in this thing because this is all pretty much Waterman's pens now. Like I have all my Waterman's pens out here, but I have 34 Waterman's pens and I don't have space for all my other like German and Japanese fountain pens. So I went and bought the Galen leather crazy horse in the forest green 10 pen case so that I can carry around both and have those. Oh, wow. And it's tiny. It's awesome. So I got this and now I have this. They're like ever so slightly different green colors. They're the same leather, but you know, it works. I'm happy. Let's check this guy out. This came with like a whole dust bag in this giant like shoe box size box. And this thing still, I think like 50 bucks. I'll have to check it out. Let's see. How much did I spend on this? It does not say on there. That's probably smart. I buy something and I immediately forget how much I paid for it. So that's nice. You know, I like the I like that it gets all worn and beat up and stuff. I hope this fits my pens. It's like a different thing. That's crazy. I mean, it's the same thing. It's the Horse Forest Green, but it's like a completely different color on the inside. Oh, and the outside. And the outside's a different color. It might have changed it, though. Who knows? Maybe different suppliers, different, um, you know, sometimes, you know, like right now, there's all kinds of shortages going on with uh, still with COVID. So, yeah, let's try it out. Um Today I had, where are my, where's my pen? Where is my pen? Well, we'll try this out with the uh, good pen to use is the Namiki Yukari Royale. There's enough space in there to fit all that. Yeah, well, that fits in there. Let's try a pen on the other side now, too, though. I just thought this thing was going to be a lot bigger. I was wrong. It was incorrect. Uh, and when we will do the... Um, this is the Lamy Dialogue 3. Let's put that in there.
Well, they're right on top of each other, but it fits. There we go. Hooray. Yeah, Fernando, a case for each brand. That would be... Uh, I would have one case for pretty much... Well, I don't know. I only have two uh, Lamis. What I might end up doing... Oh, geez. What did I do? What did I do? Wow, this is like... Is it caught in there? Something's caught in there. There we go. Got it. Got it. Save the day. What I might do is I might have like my 10 go-to pens in here and then I can still store other things in this. My whole thing is going to the Los Angeles, I'm sorry, going to the San Francisco pen show in August. I'm going to bring my whole collection with me just because I want to be able to talk about anything. So um, yeah, like I said, I have 34, I have 33 here. And this package is going to be my 34th Waterman's pen, which is out of control. And the oldest one I have is from the 1890s. And my newest Waterman is from the early 1930s. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 10, I think you need another pen case. Well, maybe I'll do this. Maybe I'll do this. Maybe at the show, maybe if like Galen's there or something or I see something else, you'll just give this away to someone, you know? I like giving crap away, so I'll probably just give away more stuff. Yeah, Bosco, my roommate is great. Hmm. The WAG Productions, thank you. Uh, David, thanks for checking out this video. You still owe me a phone call, David. Where's my phone call, David? Just joking. Hi from Italy. Thanks for watching. Forty-eight pen case. Yeah, not full yet, Matthew. Famous last words. You got your first pen case. It's not full yet. Yeah, it will be very soon. These things fill up so quickly. It's no joke. This hobby. Um, Marilyn, how many how many pens do you have? I'm curious. Oh, you had a bowl system for your pens? That's that's fun. You just threw all your pens in a bowl. To be fair, that's not a bad idea. Not a bad way to go. Well, thanks for watching from uh, Mexico, Rodolfo. Let's see here. Gracias. I'll hit you up after the stream for sure, David. All right, guys, let's get into this. This is a <laughs> kind of a controversial uh, purchase. And I'll get into why it's controversial after I open it up. This is a total grail pen. Granted, the last five pens I've gotten are like grail pens. But this is again from David Nishimura. It's one I think he's had on his site for a really long time. By the way, there will be links down below, gulepens.com and David Nishimura. David was nice enough to send this out the day that his youngest was graduated in high school. So thank you for sending my pen. Family's more important than me getting my pen. But I am only house-sitting right now. And I moved back to my house with my old background and all that stuff. All those, that stuff will be um, next Tuesday. I will be back in the house. So from now on, when I have the videos of me talking, you'll see my like dog painting and the dandruff painting behind me again. And then I hung up, just hung up some other things like Waterman stuff. Surprised he didn't give me an eyedropper with this one. This is another eyedropper pen. I hope I can fill it up. Do I even have an eyedropper with me? I think I took all my eyedroppers home. That's okay. This is, as 
as rare as it gets in the world of Watermoons. This is a Waterman's 13 with the Stanhope viewer on the inside. So Stanhope is a little miniature lens and in there, there is a photograph. Wow. Yeah, it's a little tiny miniature photograph. I wonder if I can get it up to the camera if you guys can see the miniature. Oh, you can. You can see a little mini photograph in there. Ah. That is the Waterman's Building in New York, 191 Broadway. And this was made for the 35th anniversary of the company, 1918-1919. So it is just an eyedropper filled pen with a number three size nib, which is a very weird, pretty rare nib actually. And is eyedropper filled, so you just unscrew this, fill it up with ink and you're good to go. Whoa, that is a weird, there's a weird little piece to it. Interesting. The reason why this pen is controversial is I have a friend who offered me his for the longest time. And I kept saying, oh, it's too expensive. It's too expensive. It's too expensive. And then I realized that there are two different versions of this pen. There is... This one, which is the one with the nickel clip and no bands, and it's just black chased hard rubber. And right here it says 35th anniversary on it. There's another one with a gold filled clip and two gold bands. And my friend Dan, Dan, if you're watching this, I apologize. You know, sorry I didn't buy your pen. I didn't give you a, a reason why I wasn't buying your pen. I just something seemed off about it but dan has this cap with the other pens band on it and my friend bob just sold one as well and he said oh it's it's more common to find them like that but to show you guys what i mean i can go to my waterman's book I'm going to Stanhope page. So that's my pen. Not the exact pen, but that's my pen. And this is the other one with the gold filled clip and the two gold bands. And Dan and my friend Bob have that this cap with these bands. And it's just my OCD. I don't have OCD, but I have a little smidge of OCD. Would It would bother me if I had the nickel clip with the two gold bands. So... I opted to get David Nishimura's and it was kind of just a, I don't know. I wanted, uh, I was going to get a 12 PSF, which is basically a Waterman's 52, but it has its original box and all this stuff. And then I was thinking like, uh, I just say, screw it. Let's do it. And just get this, which is, I mean, they're so rare. They're so hard to find the, when they do come around, I mean, this is a really, really expensive pen. Um, Drawings and scribblings. I'm happy that Watermans are your favorite pens too. This is my favorite band, uh, band brand because uh, Watermans uh, was founded on my birthday, February 12th. But yeah, let's see if you guys can get that in there. There's that little mini photograph inside there. Sorry if I'm making any of you sick, but yeah, that is a Stanhope viewer. And these were prominent uh, in the 1800s to the, by like the 1950s, they kind of died out. But it's a tiny mini little viewer in there. Oh, Marilyn, you're going to kill me. Um, this was $2,600. $2,650 to be exact. So, yeah, not a cheap pen. <laughs> It kind of looks like all the other ones. I have a, this is a, a 13. Here's a Waterman's. Here's a Waterman's 15. So they all kind of look about the same. It's literally the fact that this was made for the 35th anniversary. 
yeah, it's, <laughs> I need to calm down. I should calm down. Uh, yeah, I just keep getting grail pen after grail pen after grail pen. But uh, my rarest pen, probably this and the Waterman's Pink. I actually paid more for the Waterman's Pink and the Waterman's number seven pink than I did for this. And uh, this one is actually only worth about $1,500. I just overpaid because uh, I was impatient and I had COVID. So I'll use COVID as my excuse for why I overpaid for this pen. But I paid more for this than I did for this. But these are pretty, pretty rare, pretty hard to get. Um, I think the Waterman's Gray is actually harder to find than the Waterman's Pink. Uh, but I only paid $250 for this. It has a K carved into the bottom of the barrel. And I got a new cap for it, but um, I didn't pay very much for that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. My brain's a little, little screwed up. Uh, the Waterman's coin filler from 1910 to 1915. These are also very rare, What's even more rare are the coins themselves. So the pen is worth about 350 bucks, 375 bucks. Coin is worth, I mean, could be worth maybe like up to $300, but together this is like a thousand dollar package, which is cool. The coin filler. Then I have the sleeve filler. These are also pretty hard to come by. You can find them. They're just hard to come by. Um, this was also kind of expensive, but not as expensive as the Stanhope. Stanhope is just ridiculous. Um, I can leave some pens for you. I'll have pens for you. Uh, but yeah, I am insane. There are lots of vintage Waterman's pens. Um, I just, I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm not really attracted to the modern ones. Um, yeah, uh, Marilyn, from, from what I've been told, there are 10 black Waterman's number sevens in existence or something like that. Or every time they trade hands with someone, they know about it. So I'm not really looking for a black anytime soon because a black is a pink they're the same exact thing all they did was men didn't want to buy the pink pen so they rebranded it as black that's all they did so um yeah so i'm going to scroll through some of these uh comments in the chat just kind of see what's going down uh are uh, I'm not sure when the best day is to go for the uh, the San Francisco Pen Show. I'm going to be there Thursday through Monday. Granted, the show is only like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm, I'm driving up Thursday, and then I'm going to stay until Monday and then drive home. So that's the plan. I'm going to road trip it with my buddy Troy. He's going to drive out here from Phoenix, and then we're going to drive up together. Um. Uh, I haven't had any issues uh, with eyedropper pens leaking. Uh, the Actually, the only one I do have that, that does leak is my 12VP, this little tiny pen. This one does leak. Well, it doesn't leak. It just gets on my hands. But I've never had it like actually drip out or anything like that. Um, but what's great about them is, I mean, they hold a ton of ink. So I just, I took home all my eyedroppers and I'm like, hmm, because I'm, I'm moving back to my, back to my mom's house. That's where, that's where I've been living for the last like nine years. And we get along really well. <laughs> in fact, she, uh, she goes, uh, how do you feel about me moving back in? And she goes, I'm so excited. She goes, how do you feel about moving back in? I go, I'm so excited. We get along really well. And I miss talking to people like here it's fine i'm in this big house by myself with a cat a bird and there's six tortoises in the backyard and you know they can be a little high maintenance sometimes but um 
I miss having people to talk to. In the three months I've lived here, I've had like four friends over. We went and got food and that was pretty much it. Like, <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking forward to having someone to talk to more often. Let's see here. Yeah, uh, the story is what matters, I, I think. Well, in the end, they're just physical objects. So they make us happy for a short amount of time until we move on to the next one. Um, but, yeah. Uh, so... The only issue with a pen that I've had, so yeah, eyedroppers, I mean, they're full of ink, so you don't really want to store them nib down. You want to store them nib up just so they don't leak on you. Like they would leak if you, if you store it. I've had issues with pens that aren't eyedropper pens that if they're stored nib down, you know, they tend to leak out and that sort of thing. But um, like today's pen that I took to, to work with me was my uh, Montblanc 149. This thing has ink all over the nib. This was stored nib up, but it's just been very humid today. The weather in Southern California today is awful. It, um, I mean, it's sunny, it's pretty outside, but it's humid. It's like living in Florida. So sorry if you live in Florida, but I can't do humidity. <laughs> but I have one pen, it is my 52X. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not even it. Uh, it's my 52X. There you go. It's a black pen. This is the only pen I, I've had an issue with. It's this little tiny number two size nib on this big, beefy 55 sized body. And I had it all inked up. And I laid it flat in my case. And it left a big old puddle of ink. So... Yeah, eyedropper pens, you don't want to store nib down. Um, this is any, it isn't even an eyedropper, but these vintage pens flow so well that uh, I just don't recommend having them either lay flat or nib down. Three, one, four, J Rock. Hello. I am living in a zoo. I feel like Dr. Doolittle. I've got a cat, a bird, and those six tortoises in the backyard. And they're, you know, they're awesome. The cat's like my buddy now. We're like best of pals, even though I'm a dog person. But, um, but yeah, no, I'm ready to go back and see my dog. Miss him. He's 16. He's an old man. And uh, my mom needs more help with him every day. So. Uh, what is my daily pen? Uh, every pen is a daily pen. I want to make sure that every pen can write. Um, so I can take any pen that I have with me to work. Although I just got this guy. I am not going to daily carry this guy. This is a Waterman's 0322. It is a gold fill. That's what the zero means. The three means it is um, gold overlay, but only on the barrel. If it was a 0522, then it would have a gold cap as well. Uh, but this is such an awesome pen. It's from like 1899. And my friend um, Mac Greenberger helped me deoxidize it. So it was very, very oxidized and just looked. I mean, everything else looked fine, but it looked pretty terrible. Now it is nice and black and crisp. And I was totally blown away. I had no idea you could do this. But he also put a sack in my, this is a Waterman 16 PSF, which is basically a 56. So it's a lever filler model with, with a number six size nib. I had no idea, no freaking clue that you could just use a heat gun. And this thing had tool marks, like really deep tool marks. Someone put pliers on it. We're trying to apply, uh, you know, rip it off. But you can just use a heat gun and like twirl this over a heat gun and it takes out all of those marks because it's just hard rubber. Amazing. So exciting. Um, 
Oh no. Hope your cat's okay. Bye, David. Have a great day. Thanks for checking in. Um, I am in the OC right now. I'm in Old Town Orange, so I'm house sitting for my one of my best friends from call. Sorry, one of my best friends from high school. I'm house sitting for his mom. My buddy is coming back from New Zealand next uh, Tuesday, and he was like, "You don't have to move out. You can stay." And I go, where are you going to sleep? Where are you and your wife, where are you guys going to sleep? He goes, well, we're going to sleep in my room. I go, where do you think I've been staying? <laughs> in your room. So uh, so I'm moving out. I'm moving back in with my mom in Huntington Beach. Um, me and my mom make good roommates. We understand each other. We're like, I am such a mama's boy. And my sister was very much the, the, the daddy's girl. Um, so, yeah. That's that's usually how it kind of goes. Um, so yes, I am in Orange County. And I'm gonna be in Orange County. I work at Disneyland, which is here in Orange County. So I'm not going anywhere out of Southern California, at least anytime soon. As much as uh, I can't afford a house here, I mean, maybe if I really moved like out to Riverside or something, but still, even then, it's expensive. So I'm kind of just, you know, like renting a room for my mom, for the time being, but. It is what it is. I'm happy. She's happy. We help each other out. And uh, she's not, you know, she's not extremely upset that I'm buying fountain pens and stuff. Um, sorry, if you hear any noises, there are wild parrots outside. In Old Town Orange here, we have wild parrots. And they're insane. They just if you can imagine like a flying, they sound like what I would imagine a flying piranha would sound like. It's like, oh God, terrifying. Yeah, you're just down in Santa Ana. I know that, Marilyn. So, Coolio, guys. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to play with this a little more and see what else this, I was expecting this to be like this sized, but thinner. And this thing is tiny. So we'll see what else this can fit. And who knows, maybe I just, if I end up not really using it or anything, maybe I just give this to one of you. I'm just a little worried with the, uh, like this is all a Rushi. I'm worried about that with the teeth of this. So I just don't want it to get scratched up. So we'll play with it. Doesn't seem like the most safe thing. Let's try the 149. Here. If it's a little better, but yeah, cool. Like the world's smallest little ten pin case. They're nice though. I like Gillen's products. They're not super crazy expensive. They're in like kind of the sweet spot. But it's they're just they're really good products. So do, 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 do. yeah, whatever makes you happy. As long as you're not hurting anyone, you're not putting yourself in financial debt. Um, I mean, I kind of am. No, no, I'm fine. Uh, just do what makes you happy. Don't put others down. Um, yeah. Be yourself. But yeah, this is actually kind of a short uh, mail call. I don't really have anything else. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment down there. I'm going to try and answer things for you. This thing's just so wild. Let's see. There's the Waterman's building. Sorry, I'm so shaky. I mean, you can see how tiny that little dot is. The pen corner. That's such a crazy thing. What a crazy little gimmick. But I am going to definitely give it a try riding with it. It's apparently very, very flexy. 
And number three size nib is just such a weird size. But yeah. Uh, any other brands I like? I like uh, Lamy. I like uh, Mont Blanc. I like, I was, uh, for a little bit there, I had some Parker Vacumatics. Um, I sold them to a guy named Robert at the last Orange County Pen Hangout uh, for pretty cheap. I shouldn't have sold them for that cheap, but he was a really nice guy and I wasn't using them. So even gave away, I had uh, a Schaefer. I made a video about my Schaefer Triumph Wideband and I gave it to my friend Rumiko. So, um, oh yeah, yeah, no, moving, moving back in with mom is the best way to save money. And, you know, we take care of each other. Like I look out for her and she looks out for me and all that stuff. And, um, she used to be able to call up my dad all the time and talk to him. And since my dad passed, you know, my parents were divorced, but they got, they still got along really well. Ooh, you mean 191 Broadway? It might still be there. I'm actually curious to find out. Let's see. Um, Google Maps. 191 Broadway. Oh, there's a 191 Broadway in Costa Mesa. That's fun. No, New York. That is not what I thought it was. There's a 191 Broadway in Dobbs Ferry, New York, which is not near New York, New York. I don't think that's right. Nope. There might not be a 191 Broadway anymore. Let's see. Broadway, New York. Sorry if I'm sorry I'm so quiet. Oh wait a minute. Maybe. Oh, sad face. I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second. Uh, it's covered in scaffolding. Oh, no. Yeah. No. <laughs> This is what 191 Broadway looks like now. So, not sad. So sad. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, 173, before they moved to 191, they were 173 until 1917. 73, Broadway. Is that building still there? I don't think so. No, <laughs> it's not. Part of the building is, but you can see where, like, here's the photo of it. So not really the building, but you can see how it was all torn away and stuff. So that's a bummer. 173 Broadway is gone too. Darn. Oh, well, we tried. We tried. Um, but as far as other brands I like, as far as like what I'm really passionate about, it's all, it's all Waterman's really like this brand. I'm still like, I, I keep reviewing stuff. I'm going to keep reviewing. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't see this here. I have an eyedropper. I can fill this pen and use it. Yay. I'm excited now. Um, I just really like this brand. I think it's the fact that, see, and I don't like the modern brand. The modern stuff, you know, it's 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 a French company. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with France. Uh, Je m'appelle Craig. Yay. Did Duolingo and did French for a little bit there. Um, but I, like my friend Otto Yang, I'm really into 
the hard rubber stuff and I'm into the overlays. Um, not so much into celluloid and the bright, pretty colors and stuff. Really black or red ripple and I'm set. Um, and there's other brands that make things. There's a actually Schaefer has a sub brand called Craig and I want one of their pens just because it says Craig on the side of it. Um, but as far as like other really collectible brands, like I still somewhere out there have an order for a Namiki Emperor with the Chinkin Dragon art on it somewhere. Somewhere out there I've ordered it. I haven't paid for it yet, but I've ordered it. And uh, like I really like Namiki. I like Pilot a lot. I like Lamy. Um, I like Kavecos. I have several Kavecos. Um, they're great little pens for how, you know, and they're really affordable. Um, I, I don't think Lamy makes a bad product. There's some pens I wouldn't get, like a Lamy CP1. They're just too thin for me. And I have thin pens. Like, look at this thin pen I got cleaned up. This is a, I mean, this is probably as thin as a Lamy CP1. But the fact that it's in modeled hard rubber makes it, I don't know, just cool. And it's from like 1908. Super cool little pen. Um, but no, there are, uh, I mean, I don't think there's a wrong brand in fountain pens. Uh, maybe people that make knockoff or like straight up rip off other brands. That's not super cool. Uh, but Jin Hao makes great pens and they're not, you know, you can get a nice Jin Hao for like eight bucks or, or less. And they're great pens. They're awesome starter pens for people that are getting into the hobby. And I think any pen that's out there is a great pen because we're all in this hobby together, whether you're into modern pens or vintage pens or antique pens. Um, although you start getting into this stuff and then you stop writing with it because you don't want to mess up the pen. Um, but I believe with my collection, I believe everything is important and needs to be written with. Even if you don't write with it, it needs to be capable of being written with at least. So yeah, loan me a bucket of pens to review. They would be really helpful with this channel because what I want to talk about is Watermans and what you guys want to see is me talking about things other than Watermans. That's kind of how it goes. Like I'm really, really passionate about Watermans. I have so many pens now and uh, like this one's crazy cool. Um, it doesn't really matter if you're, a Republican or a Democrat or whatever. Um, but this is a Democratic National Convention press pen. Let's zoom in on that. That's me. But this is from 1924, and this was made for a press person to use, and it's never been inked up. It's just super cool. And it's a, a manifold nib. So uh, it's made for, like... It's made for, um, what's that paper called? Where you like, you press down on it, uh, what, whatever. It's made for that, that it's made for like salesmen sort of receipts and stuff like that, but really cool, really strange, cool engraving on it. Um, I have so much cool stuff I want to talk to you guys about, but then at the same time, like put out a Twisby video and it gets 500 views put out a Waterman's video and it maybe might get a hundred views. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes, but yeah, I'd be happy to review some more pens for you guys. Um, Cause I keep spending my money on the vintage stuff. And then I go and talk about the vintage stuff and you're like, but that's not what we're into. I'm like, I know, but gotta be a little bit different from all the other pen reviewers. I mean, you go to fig boot on pens and he's talking about, every pen like that he has brands sending him stuff to review um i am buying the things to review them and then um giving them away so i still have to give away that twisby uh, i didn't forget about that don't worry there will be a twisby coming i'm giving away and really if there is a modern pen that i am buying to review you can believe it that i'm going to give it away so there will be, oh, yes, thank you, guys. Carbon copy paper. Yes, uh, that nib was meant for co carbon copy paper, as well as this one. 
This is a 72 with the tiniest little manifold nib, also for carbon copy paper. Um, but, yeah. Uh, OC Mark, I will definitely show you my Eames collection. I can't wait to go home and be around my Eames collection. But I have, uh, yeah, I, um, ooh, uh, this is an Eames, but it's pretty awesome. Oh, no, I'm dropping stuff. Like I said, this is an Eames. This is all my, like, oh, oh, not all of mine, but this is a bunch of my Waterman's, like, ads and ephemera and things like that. But all the way in the back here is something really special. It's a guy who worked very closely with Charles and Ray Eames. But this is my George Nelson autographed letter from 1946. I picked this up off of eBay. But that is George Nelson, who was the director of the, uh, he was the head art director of, or the creative design director of Herman Miller for 20 years. Look up George Nelson clock, George Nelson furniture. And you just instantly recognizable. He had a whole team. He was like the, the Renaissance master who had his whole team kind of do everything, but um, that's one of those things I have in my collection and I keep every once in a while, I'll be like, man, I really want to get a new pen. I should sell that George Nelson letter. No, it's, if anything, someday I'm going to donate it to, um, the George Nelson foundation or something like that. It's, they don't exist. They're just, they're in museums. Uh, there's a lot of George Nelson stuff in the museum. Of, uh, sorry. The library of Congress not museum, in the library of Congress. Um, but I bought that thing and I go, man, I'll never see one of these ever again. So, but it's like original letterhead from the Ar Architectural Forum, which is part of Time Magazine in 1946. And I'm now wondering, like, what pen did he use? Probably 1946. He's probably using a Parker. That's my guess. But we'll never know. We'll never know what he used. Died in 1986, I think, was when George Nelson passed away. But yeah. Do, 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 do. What do I think of Pelican? You had a phone call from my buddy Chris. Can't talk to you right now. Chris, I got important things to do. Um, I love my uh, Pelican M800. Still inked up it's got um it's got a uh, Montblanc Irish green in it green pen got to match it uh but I use this one all the time so I love this pen I think 800 is a good size uh anything larger like getting the um 1000 I mean that's a that's a big jump up but you know I have the I have you know the 149 and I have the Namiki it's not that big of a jump yeah, I don't know. I, I like the nib on this though. And it and I bought it from Apple Boom Pen In. They sell them for like 400 500 bucks, which is a pretty good deal for one of these pens. I try if I can't get like a vintage pen from a vintage dealer or eBay or like what's nice with Greg Sheik too is he doesn't charge. Um since he's in Florida and I'm in California. I don't have to pay taxes on that, but I'm always trying to avoid paying taxes on things to save the money. But to match that, I have this little Pelican 140 from the 1950s. And this one is ground. Um, it is custom ground and it goes like needlepoint to like triple broad. So you can get some real Sp Spencerian stuff with it. Um, I kind of, Greg Minuskin at the LA Pen Show kind of, sucker me into buying this he didn't sucker me he was just like you know it's a really great pen you can get a good you know here's a good deal on it and me and my buddy david both bought them so uh yeah that's cool it reminds me of the first pelican i ever had the first fountain pen i ever had was a pelican but you know they're a nice little pair i'm just not much into celluloid so i don't 
have too many celluloid pens. And by I don't have too many, I mean, it, that's it. <laughs> that's like the one celluloid pen I have. Um, but yeah. David, you use yours daily. I'm happy you do. Whoever want this one, you can have it because I haven't touched it since the pen show, but it's a cute little pen. Let's see here. Oh, Faber-Castell. As far as Faber-Castell goes, I will only really use these sort of Faber-Castell pens. Um, I have a video, if you go back, I don't know if you've seen it, of my biggest regret of 2021, where I talk about the Faber-Castell classic in Mancasar, which I ended up giving away for my 500 subscriber giveaway. But that was the biggest pain in the ass of all time. And yes, I probably broke the thing myself. I probably used too much pressure and I probably messed up the tines in the long run. But their customer service was total BS. Um, the whole experience was awful. I ended up sending that pen out to Greg Sheik, an antique digger. He fixed up the nib for me and I gave it away to Koya Gord's on here. How do you? Because I know Gordon's your name. Anyways, that was uh, that's why I don't I don't I don't like any of the Faber Castell pens. I hope that pen's working out for you, Gordon. Um, but uh, I did not like it at all. Hey, I buy a pen. I don't like it. I give it away. You can have it. It'll be it's yours. Um. Ooh, what's your grail pen, Marilyn? I want to know. What is your grail pen? What is your grail pen? What is your holiest of grail pens? I'm just curious. I haven't found my grail pen yet. I found a lot of pens that make me really happy. Um, I mean, a lot of pens. I'm actually thinking... Oh, good. I'm happy you love the pen. A Waterman 12... POC with a boinga boinga. But what is that? <laughs> what is that? A really flexible, bouncy nib? Is that what you're saying? Oh, okay, cool. Um, I have two pens, actually. Maybe the next time we're at the uh, Orange County Pen Hangout, which, by the way, I talked to Matt. Green burger about and uh he's unsure of when the next one will be just because it takes work to set those things up um my waterman's 12 vp which i had the nib fixed up by greg minuskin is the most flexible nib i own more so than the pink Number seven. So I paid $400 for this pen. This is a lot of money for a little tiny pen, but it's a really, really rare one. And this little tiny number two size nib is somehow more flexible than this gigantic, super long number five nib. So, yeah, it's called the Waterman's number seven, but it has a number five nib. There you go. The more you know. Um, don't know how, but it's amazing. So, hey, I guess they're right though. Boinga boinga meant bouncy, flexible, very good. So, POC though, is it like 12 like pocket filler? Like, they have there's 12. Waterman's 12 PSF, which is basically a Waterman's 52 uh, pocket self filler. All it means is the the P stands for screw cap, and then self filler has the lever. Um, there's a lot of people out there. I actually sold a Waterman's number seven nib, Waterman's number seven nib, water of uh, number five nib size nib. So it's a number seven nib with the keyhole, but it is a number five size nib. I sold one of these to a um, 
to a, a nice guy up in like Chicago, something like that. And I go, oh, cool. Like, are you going to restore like a, a pen? Are you making do Waterman's number seven? He's like, no, nah, I'm going to put it on Twisby. Okay. I mean, to each their own. You know, you bought the thing from me. You can do whatever you want with it. Um, but it was a really nice nib, really great writing nib that would look beautiful on one of these beautiful number seven bodies. We put it on Twisby. And good for you. Yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> Brilliant! That's exactly what I would do. Yeah, no, it's okay. Caps are okay. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people. I mean, this the pen is whatever, but like the nib is amazing on this this thing. If you were to transplant on any of the other number two sized pens that I have, um, you'd have. You know, you could put this on a uh, on the coin filler. Just take this nib out, put it on this, and this would have that amazing nib or whatever. Um, put it on the sleeve filler. The sleeve filler already has an amazing nib on it, but I mean, it would be even better. Um, you can just change these things out whenever you want. Um, these nibs are actually the exact same age. They're from around the exact same time. So it wouldn't be difficult to change out or anything. None of these pens are, are hard to change out. In fact, just, uh, I mean, everything is so easy to switch out on these things. You want to change the cap band? Great. Unscrew the finial. You can change out the cap band. And whether you, whether or not you have the good case in to, to make to get the cap bands is another thing, but really easy to change out. The nibs, what's amazing with uh, hard rubber, just a blow dryer, and then you can take apart the whole section, and then you can take out the nib and the feed and everything. It just all comes out with like a blow dryer or a heat gun. You know, it's a little a little more sketchy, but like you get scratches in the thing. Cool heat gun. Whoop. Gone. Amazing. Um, I'm going to make a video about the uh, 0322. Um, it writes awesome, but it's uh, it's still a pretty fragile little pen, and it has an amazing star nib on it. So they only used the star nibs until about 1889. There were two different versions of it. But this is the later star star nib, and this was an eBay pickup. Um, I bought another pen that turned out to have the wrong cap on it, and I was never gonna find the the right cap for it. Uh, the nib wasn't right; there just parts weren't right on it. Um, and uh, yeah, so I went on eBay and looked up Waterman taper cap, and this popped up, and I go. <laughs> but the whole point with these is yeah they have these weird little taper caps so they look kind of strange they look like little like harry potter wands but the whole thing was you post it and now you have a pen that oh, a pen and holder that looks like a dip pen so that was the thing they all did uh it's not posted the most securely on there just because this diameter is a little nar more narrow. It was very oxidized. So Matt Greenberg help, helped me um, get it. It's, it's actually, you know, like it caps much tighter now than it used to, but it is still, it, it'll stay on, but it'll, oh, you can feel it wiggling on there. Oh, there it goes. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. There it goes. So it'll eventually fall off. But I mean, if you're riding with it, it's not that big of a deal because you always have it back here. It's not going to just wiggle off like that. Yeah, it's it's cool. It's amazing to find one too that doesn't have a monogram on it, but 
it looks brand new. It's really, really hard to see, but on the cap, it has the patent date of 1884 on it, February 12th, 1884, and Waterman's Ideal. It's just, it, you wouldn't see it on the camera. It's very, very faint. And it's also very faint on the backside where it says 0322. Um, the guy who sold it thought it was an 0522. It would be a little more expensive just because the whole cap would also be gold filled. And then there are, I guess, uh, four, oh, yeah, four two twos and four two fours. And the first number means, so if this was a five two two, it would be a solid 14 or 18 karat gold pen. The O in front of that makes it gold filled. So it's like 5% gold. But what's crazy is these are these were all hand carved, not molded or anything like that. Someone went through and hand carved for this thing 120 years ago. Just wild. Wild, crazy. Yeah, old Watermans are super cool. Um, the other old Watermans I have and that I unbox on like one of my last mail calls is this also has a star nib on it. This is from like 1901, 1902. This is fine silver. So sterling is 925, 92.5% silver. This is 99.9% silver. It has a little nice flower motif on it. This one is monogrammed with a BB on it. Whoop. So I'm, I like joking that it's the Beastie Boys. The Beastie Boys from the turn of the century. Yeah, nice pen. No clip on it. Don't really need a clip on one of these pens. Also an eyedropper fill. Um, yeah. And the only other overlay pen I have is this 452. And this is actually not the original cap. The original cap, the, the right cap for this pen uh, is missing... It's original Sterling clip. But I'm, I'm actually pretty surprised that Sterling pens don't go for more. These are, I mean, they're not cheap. Like, none of these pens are cheap. Um, it's actually, take that back. Cheapest Waterman's I own. Waterman 72. With that tiny little number two manifold nib. Cheapest pen I own was still $72. But here's the cool thing. The clip is 14 karat gold. It's eBay. I was just like, should I bid on this? I was having um, I was having ramen with a buddy. And I was like, should I bid on this pen? And he's like, I, I guess so. And I'm like, how much, what should I put down as the bid? And he's like, I don't know, Craig, um, 50 bucks. And I was like, I'm going to put down 120. And it sold for 72. And I go, cool. Got another pen. Don't know what it is, but it's a Canadian number 72. So it's a screw cap eyedropper. And they made these in like the late 20s and 30s because even though there are levers and things like that, people still needed eyedroppers. They needed the incapacity. So we got this and we checked it out and we're like, oh, it's Hallmarked. Oh, it's, it's 14 karat gold. That's rad. Just the clip itself is worth more than I paid for this pen. That's super cool. Nice. Nice, Donna. Like, yeah, there's nothing wrong with Waterman's from times after what, what I'm into, but um, something struck a chord with me and, and vintage stuff and early stuff, and I'm just totally screwed. Also, I don't know if you noticed in the background, but there's no Waterman's sign. Um, the Waterman's, the cool Waterman's like poster that I got uh, is in Chicago getting checked out and I sent it to um, the graphic conversation, graphic conservation company. It's a company that's been in business uh, for 90 years and I am getting the thing professionally restored. So I don't know how much that's going to cost, but uh, I was going to send it to this guy in New York called poster fix. 
he sent a kind of rude email saying, good luck. Um, if you find anyone who can do any work on it, be nice to them because they could probably F it up for you. And I was like, okay, dude, sorry. Um, not the most professional thing. And then uh, I basically had to sign a release form with this company out of Chicago, but they're like a legit company. And I'm really excited that pe that pen poster, that pen banner is going to have a brand new life. And uh, it's going to look beautiful uh, displayed in my house someday. I really want, I hope they can make it last in such a way that I can um, take it with me to shows and stuff and talk about it because nobody's ever seen it before. It's from 1915, super rare, and it's in awful shape, so it needs to be fixed up. Yeah, it's going to get framed. It's uh, 48 by 17, so it's uh, 48 inches by 17 inches. It's it's a big boy, but yeah, it needs help, and it's going to be beautiful. Wow, that's you've wanted that pen for 22 years. Congratulations on finally getting one. That's that's awesome. I am uh man, I've gone like like I said, I've gone crazy. I uh. I had one pen, so I just passed um, my one year of, of making fountain pen videos. I had one pen a year ago, technically two, if you count the uh, the Nomos Kaveco, I had two, because this one was in a box that I got, um, a uh, like art box that I got along with my watches. So technically I had two, I had this in a Lamy 2000, then I got the Auto Hut Design 8. Then I got the Mumblon 146. Then I got the Pelican. Then I just, just kept going and going and going. And in November, I went to my first pen hangout and I had 12 German fountain pens. I was only going to collect German modern fountain pens. I was not going to get into vintage. And then I bought. A Waterman's 52 and I bought the and I bought the 12 VP and then within a week I had like seven of them and then I went to the LA pen show and I flipped a bunch to get other pens and then I was like okay I'm gonna start clicking the Waterman's number seven and now I have 34 <laughs> Waterman's pens just Waterman's pens I'm including the other ones and I actually have started getting into pencils um so again, this will be given away at some point. The box is at my mom's house right now, and this is still all here. Uh, this is kind of a fun story. Um, I inherited this from a family friend, the same guy I got my first found pen from. It is a Mickey Mouse pencil. You can see the little Mickey Mouse sticker on it. And the there was a Mickey Mouse on the top that was uh, that broke off a long time ago. So I set out to be like, hey, I'm gonna restore this. I'm gonna get a, uh, I'm gonna get another pencil, and it'll, I'll repl replace the parts. So I went on eBay and I found this pencil with the old school Mickey Mouse. It's like nightmare fuel on top. It's missing its sticker, but I go, you know what? I'll just put the parts together and we'll be set. They are two different pencils. You can see that little band in the middle. And the fact that the that the uh, finish is different. This is a gold finish. This has a silvered finish. There are two different pencils. So my quest to make one great pencil failed, and now I have two mishmashed. Well, one not broken Mickey and one, you know, <laughs> whatever. It is what it is. This was free. And this I spent 30 bucks on. If you can find one with the sticker and with the Mickey on top, by the way, this is metal on top. Uh, they go for like 200 bucks. Pretty crazy. But yeah, I don't collect anything Disney, which is funny because I work at Disneyland. But I did uh, do have this Mickey Mouse pencil that I don't. I don't think they work either, but they're cool. Yeah, 
Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah. Man, rollerball. Rollerballs are good, but... Yeah. Man, my, my parents would buy... My mom had a whole collection of cross pens. Cross, like, ballpoint and rollerballs. Um, and they were all bought at Staples. If only you knew about the wonders of found pens and the internet, because you can find things like you can go on like Apple boom pen and, and buy things for way cheaper. They don't charge all the crazy. I mean, when I bought that Pelican twist, which I think Mar uh, Maryland got, um, I gave away, by the way, I gave away the metropolitan. I gave away the Explorer. I gave away the Pelican twist. There were a bunch of pens that I had that I was like, hey, take, have, I'm not using them. Um, but, uh, oh, people were telling me like, man, I paid like 30 bucks for that Pelican twist. And it was like such a cheap pen. And people from Germany were like, oh yeah, I mean, I only paid $5 or $10 at the grocery store for that pen. It's like, okay. So you get things from dealers like Apple Boom Pen and Juiced over there in um, the Netherlands and you can find pens for like, like I said, it's like $800 for a Pelican M800 in the States, but you get it from him and it's like 500 bucks. So that's uh, maybe check out Apple Boom Donna uh, for the future though. A-P-P-E-L-B-O-O-M.com. Uh, I mean, I got this from them. I got my, um, it was like 200 something bucks for the uh, Dialogue 3 I got from them. Um, I bought my, I was wrong in my video. I bought my Pilot Custom 845 in the Black Arushi from Apple Boom. And it was like 400 bucks or, but it was less than 500 for sure. And it's like, a, if you were to buy it from the States, it'd be like 850 plus tax. So Dustin, I mean, it'll it'll probably happen. Uh, bonjour, bonjour, Jacqueline. Uh, ça va? <laughs> Comment ça va? <laughs> Let's see here. Aw. I'm happy you're doing good, and you're welcome. But, uh, Jacqueline, I move home next week, and then I'll probably meet up with you at Starbucks at some point and be like, here, have ink. It's your ink. Enjoy your ink. Ooh. You are having dinner? Sounds good. Or you are making dinner. I don't need ink. Don't give me ink. <laughs> to anyone who's watching this video in the future after this live stream is over, I'm sorry for like awkwardly just sitting here and reading stuff. But. Oh, OK. You just ate dinner. That sounds good. We need waffles for dinner because that sounds good. I have to eat what's left in the freezer before I move out. Otherwise, they're just going to have like random waffles and like orange chicken from Trader Joe's. Yeah, Marilyn, you have too many ink samples. Jacqueline just has too many bottles of ink. Like, no offense, but that sounds good. Strawberry spinach salad. I um I have like three bottles of ink that I use right now. Uh, so I have Mont Blanc around the world in 80 days blue. That is like the go-to. This is the closest I've ever been to finishing a bottle of ink. Because I always get like really close to finishing a bottle of ink. And then I'm like, here, free, take it. I don't want it. Um, I have Waterman Inspired Blue. So that is an awesome color I've been having a blast with. And this is just such an oldie. Uh, but this is uh Conway Stewart blue from like 10 years ago. My mom bought it for me 
at some point and just forgot that she had it. And uh, yeah, so I have a, like, a generic Conway store blue. That's all the ink I have with me right now because I move most of my stuff home, like most of my things. I open up these, these drawers and cupboards over here and they're empty. Any letters that I've gotten from people, um, like my buddy Troy has been sending me a lot of postcards and stuff. He just sent me a postcard, so I just got that from him. It's my last postcard from Troy at this house before I move home. Uh, but I am going to be making a P.O. box uh, per requested by my mother because she's like, people want to send you stuff. Don't send it here. <laughs> so I'm going to get a P.O. box as soon as I move home. So then I'll have a, a th place for you guys to send me stuff. And then we can correspond. I love sending letters to people and vice versa. So. Uh, if any of you guys were, were ever interested in um, sending letters back and forth with, with me, as long as they're not like, you know, creepy stalker letters. I mean, if it's funny, then sure. But um, I'm down for uh, corresponding with you guys. Or if people want to send me stuff to to uh, uh, review and then I'll send them back to you. I'm down for that, too. Um, yeah, he gave me a. Penguin Books, The Garden Party. So that is the uh, that is the postcard. And then on the back side, it says, Craig, I think this is my finest nib. It's really a... I don't know what that says. It's really a... Oh, it's a Stilo, I think style stylo but uh but feels like a conkling crescent filler have fun on your move troy you have no idea i have no idea what cover, covering up the address of the house that i'm staying in but whatever that word is i don't know but anyways fun troy sent me a bunch of he sent me a bunch of paper to try out hey try this paper out okay um, I'm really excited though for this, the San Francisco show. He's going to drive out here overnight and then we're going to take my car and drive up to San Francisco. And I'm really excited too, cause, uh, I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to try and make a vlog, you know, me and how maybe, yeah, I think I thought it was stylus, my stylo pen. I don't know what it says, but, um, the plan is I am going to get so I've been corresponding a lot with Drew Brown from Goulet Pens. Uh, he's a big Haunted Mansion nerd. I work at the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland. So we've just really connected on that kind of stuff. And we talk all the time. Um, I'm going to give him a Waterman's pen, a vintage one from around 1917, 1918. And he gets a lot of pens that have 84s on them because he was born in 1984. And a lot of those vintage Waterman's pens have... 1884 on them because that is their first patent date february 12th 1884 so i'm going to get him a vintage waterman pen with a really flexible nib and i'm going to give it to him at the show and it'll be his first ever vintage or uh, this isn't even vintage this is antique this stuff is old and um let's see can you see on here let's see if i can zoom in on that no, right here on these pens that has a little patent date. This is 1884. So that'll be for Drew. Uh, not this one, obviously, but I'll have a pen for Drew. That'll be fun. I'm also giving him some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle playing cards I've had since I was a kid because he collects that stuff. And a cool Star Wars comic book from uh, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. It was the opening of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland. And I have this comic book for its opening that was given out to cast members. And I don't, I don't collect that stuff. So you can just have it. Be fun. So, yeah, guys. That is. <laughs> you love yourself a good creepy stalker. I love your videos. Thank you for letting me watch your videos. Ooh. Yeah, that's fun.
I'm insane. Yeah, I, uh, you know what? This, this is my, this is my reason for buying this pen. <laughs> and it's going to sound really ridiculous, but it's my reason. This pen was made to commemorate the 35th anniversary of the Waterman's Fountain Pen Company. I'm going to be 35 next year. So there you go. That's how I, I made it. It says 35th anniversary. Well, this is technically my 35th year on this planet, even though I'm not 35 years old yet. So that's my reasoning for doing that. Um, was it, is it worth spending $2,600 on a pen? Probably not. Uh, but am I going to find another one in the wild that is in as good of shape as this one? Probably not. So there you go. Do I need any reason to buy them? Um, no. <laughs> Just to fight for the future. Uh, I actually, there's a book right there. It's a, actually, let's, let's grab it. Apologize ahead of time. I'm in shorts. I have the widest legs on the planet, so I wear pants every day. I'm very pale. It's funny, I have this Crunch Fitness shirt. I joined this gym, and then I couldn't go to the gym all the time because the hours I was able to go to the gym, they were always closed or they were busy or whatever. It was, it's not 24 hour fitness. It's they close at some point. And, uh, I joined the gym for about a month. I got this free shirt. Well, not free. I paid for the gym membership and then I quit the gym and I never got a gym membership ever again, but I've been wearing this shirt all the time. It's one of my, like, it's so soft. It's really great. Like it's really comfortable. But uh, yeah, I'm totally out of shape and I don't go to the gym. Um, what about this book? It's thick. It's from 1990. Not to make anybody out there feel old or anything, but I was two when this book came out. And it's cool because it has a price list in it of values of what things are worth. But it's 1990s values of what things are worth from this book. And... They had this pen. Let's see here. I think it's on page 54. There's this pen right here. And the value they have it at is like $800. So it was $800 30 years ago, 32 years ago to be exact. Um, so the value of what it is now, like for what they sell for, it's pretty accurate. 2,600 bucks is how much that pen costs. Now, the crazy thing, the story goes that Frank D. Waterman, who was the president of the company at the time, made these, had these pens made so that he could give them out to his friends. So they are hyper rare. Uh, this one in this book is in better shape than mine. Um, but super crazy rare. It's a cool book though. There's one pen in here uh, that has it listed for $7,000. It is a Parker Aztec. Um, it's like this overlay with this cool Aztec like design on it. Uh, that is a $25,000 pen today. If you can find a, like an original authentic one, let me try and find a photo of it in here. Um, Ooh, I do not like that at all. Oh. Oh, yeah. I just rolled up to a Parker that has a swastika on it, but they are before Nazi Germany, so they're not those swastikas, but still, like, I find that stuff so off-putting. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine... Uh, where's this Aztec pen? Oh, there it is. It's on that page. Cool. This pen right here, that one, uh, $25,000 <laughs> today. And in here, in this book from 32 years ago, says it was worth about $7,000. So crazy stuff. Um, also, like, I didn't even imagine... Uh, <laughs> Sweet baby Jesus in a tuxedo, 25K. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, oh yeah, no. Uh, 1980s is not vintage to me. Uh, a pen from the 50s is vintage, and then all things I like are like antiques. Um, 80s, I mean, 80s, I don't want to think of myself as an antique being from the 80s. Um, and I'm just, I, I, I work at Disneyland. Everything, everything's a joke to me, even my career. Um, everyone I talk to at work, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm just a kid. And they're like, how old are you? I'm like, yeah, I'm 34. And they're like, you're not a kid. I was like, I am a child. <laughs> I am definitely do not put me in charge of anything adult supervision. Like I am not like, no, I'm, I'm 34. I'm basically in my twenties again for the second time. Um, but, uh, Waterman's 20 Waterman's 20 is a number giant number 10 size nib. And it's this giant eyedropper. It's like the size of a Namiki Kari, uh, sorry, Namiki emperor. Um, they're huge pens and they're giant eyedroppers and there's no like, like escape valve on the back to like repressurize the thing. It's literally just a giant eyedropper pen. And I had no idea how much they cost. No clue. Um, uh, my friend Otto was like, oh, maybe you'll get a Waterman's 20 someday. And I go, oh yeah, maybe like, I'll let you know if, if, you know, in the future. And he goes, oh no, I'm not selling you mine. I'm just saying maybe you'll get a Waterman's 20 in the future. And I go, oh, okay. And then somebody on Facebook was selling their Waterman's 20. And they wanted like $9,000 for the thing. I was like, why? How? How is it that much? And if it's an overlay pen, so if it's like one of these, let's see here. If it's an overlay Waterman's 20, expect to pay like $25,000, $30,000 for one of those. Like that's out of control. It is just a pen. You could have a car, a really nice car or a pen. You choose. I mean, essentially that's my whole collection for one pen. This is my entire collection. And I mean, it still blows me away. Like how cr crazy off the deep end I've gone. I went from having like at the end of the, LA Pen Show, I had 12 pens because the whole thing was I was like, I'm going to make it fit in my one drawer, in one drawer of my pen case. I'm going to fill it and I'll have one drawer of Waterman's pens. And now this whole case is almost just Waterman's. That's not true. It's a 60 pen case. I have one drawer that's just my watches. So I mean, my three watches that I wear all the time. But um, I've talked to so many people who are like, oh, I don't spend over $200 on pens. I'm like, cool, because you have like a thousand pens. So <laughs> good thing. Um, but oh, cool. Uh, yeah, it's the uh, Toyoka Craft. Um, I mean, these are beautiful. I love this case. I really wish I didn't destroy it with a pen, but uh, there's just one black spot right off to the side on one of the drawers. But lately I've just had everything displayed in these trays because why not? They got the cool Waterman's trays. Might as well have them displayed on those. I have pens everywhere now. Uh, let's put these back. I can talk about them. Let's see here. The new pen. Wait, do I have space? Gasp. <laughs> uh, I don't have space. Um, there we go. There's my black pen tray, all black pens, not too shabby. Dustin, as far as selling pens go, for me, I just don't like selling pens. I have pens that I like and I like using. And if I don't want, I, I have one pen on eBay right now, one pen. 
And you're not going to believe which one it is. But it's the AutoHuck Design 8. It's the pen that my first YouTube video I made. It's a, it's a $1,200 pen. And I've made a couple videos of like comparing it to like my, my Mont Blanc or comparing it to the Namiki Yukari Royale. And in the end, I feel like these are more worth it. They're just brands that are, I don't know, I don't know what Virtual Pen Show is, but, um, so I'll ask, what is Virtual Pen Show? I, I don't know. I'd rather, I don't, I'm like, I don't, I'm not made of money, <laughs> but I would rather kind of give, give things away than sell them. And that's where I'm at right now. Like I, with, a with, I have like 300 decks of playing cards. Cause before I was back in fountain pens, I was really into magic and decks of playing cards. And I was buying up playing cards like crazy, buying them in bulk, getting really cool vintage ones and all kinds of stuff, old tax seals. And then I would just surprise my buddy Jorge all the time with pens, like not pens. I'm sorry, with with decks of playing cards. And there was one he was really looking at. at and I went on eBay and I was like, okay, it's a hundred bucks. I'll just buy it and give it to him. And this was all like when I was using money from the pandemic that was like unemployment money. So, but I'm living at home, so whatever. Um. I have Watermans that I will never use. I will never, ever use them. But I can't get rid of them. I'm never going to use this pen. It still has its original price tag of $3.25. It's a cool safety pen with a retractable nib. And safety pens are a pain in the butt to clean because you have to eyedropper fill the top. If you lower the nib and turn it over, ink will just dump out of it. It's not practical to use in 2022. Man, it's cool. It didn't cost me that much either. It was an eBay steal. It says number 42 on the band, but the bottom says 12S. It's before they, it's like a transitional thing. So nobody ever bought it. They were like, why buy a 12S? And I can get another one with a 42 on the bottom, but $3.25. I wish it cost me $3.25. It did not. It cost me 180 something like that. It came in a box with like a really cool receipt and that sort of thing too. Fifty pens inked. See, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, eleven, twelve. Thirteen. I have fifteen pens inked right now. Fifteen, and I probably need to clean out half of those. <laughs> um. Yeah. Ooh, this is exciting. This is coming this week at some point. This is a Waterman's 52 with the wrong cap. It has its original $4 price tag on the bottom. This is the wrong cap. It's cracked, whatever, wrong cap. I found a cap. So I have a, this is going to be a, com a complete pen. I'm very excited. I've been staring at this wrong cap for the longest time. Uh, this is a cap for a Waterman's 12V, sorry, 52V. You can see how much higher the cap is, the, the clip is on the cap. This is what it should look like on a regular 52. So that's exciting. I basically had to buy an entire parts pen, so... 
It's going to have a nib. It's going to have the barrel. It's going to have the grip section. It just doesn't have a lever on it. So excited. Ooh. Wow, guys. 100, sorry, 100, one hour and 35 minutes into this thing. I'm not going to leave until Jacqueline comes back just because that'd be rude. Just be like, end <laughs> right before Jacqueline comes back. Um, God, this, these are so much fun. I'm having a blast. Let's see here. I'm always happy to have you guys join me and hang out. I keep going back and seeing like Fernando. Do you need any reason to buy them? Uh, no, <laughs> I need excuses to buy them. That's what I need. You have enough pens. You're not my mom. Yes, I am. Oh, okay. Sorry, mom. Uh, never enough pens. Never. Okay, I'll come and say hi on your mail time vlog. You'll be there. I'll be there. It's basically mail time and mail time. Get it? M A L E. <laughs> I'm stupid. Today was a brutal day. As I said earlier in Southern California, just so humid. I hate Florida weather. I don't like humidity in here. It's just total humidity. I think it was like. 80 degrees outside, which if you're not familiar with Fahrenheit, it was a nice day. I don't, I don't even want to try and figure out what Celsius is in that my brain that just doesn't compute. Is it only 46% humidity? Because it felt like it was 100% humidity. I was sweaty and disgusting. But I've showered and I'm all cleaned up and I'm enjoying my beer. My fear movie lions, not FML. <laughs> I have nothing to complain about in life other than the fact that I don't have Panda Express. Maybe I want Panda Express tonight. I was really, really excited for waffles for dinner, but no, I need to I probably need to go to Panda Express. Oh, yeah, for sure. God, we, we, you guys, we need each other. We all need each other to get, get through the craziness. I go to work with my fountain pen. And they're like, oh, cool. Let's just put this one in here. Just be like, hey, do you guys want to see what pen I have today? And they're like, what is it? A Bic? No, no, it's a Namiki Yukari Royale. Uh, yeah, it's Japanese Arushi. You want to you wanna try it? And they're like, no. Like, okay, I'm just back in my little pen corner. Um, I want to make a whole skit of pen people talking to non-pen people because it would be hilarious. It's always like, hey, you want to see my fountain pen? And then they always, well, first of all, <laughs> it's a screw cap. And they just try yanking it. And you're like, whoa, hey, hey, screw cap. Okay. And then they look at the feed. And just the feed and stare at the feed. And I'm like, no, flip it around, look at the nib. Huh, okay. Why are you using that? You know, people like text. Like, why are you using this? Like, because it's writing is a lost art. Don't give up your handwriting. I gave up on my handwriting years ago. Okay. Well. Yeah, I uh, my birthday, I had one of my Parker Vacumatics that are long gone now. But I had one of my Parker Vacumatics, and I was in an antique store. And the cashier lady, uh, I go, oh, you know, like, it was my birthday. And my sister and I went out to this antique store, and I ended up buying stuff for her and my brother-in-law. Not, you know, I didn't really want anything. I found some cool vintage postcards, but that was about it. And she's like, oh, you didn't find anything else? I'm like, oh, no, like, I'm really into fountain pens. She goes, oh, my gosh, I love fountain pens. I go, oh, yeah. Pull out my my uh, Parker Vacuumatic. It was a senior Azure, the blue one. And I go, 
check out my fountain pen. And before I could even get the word screw out of my mouth for screw cap, it's a screw cap. You untwist the cap. This lady was just yanking on it. She's like, cut, cut, cut. I was like, ah, 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 $300 pen. Ah, ah. Unscrew the cap. And then she opened it up. She goes, oh, okay. Looked at the feed, not the nib, looked at the feed and stared at the feed and was like, oh, that's cool. And put it back in and then handed it back to me. I was just like, Arr. so just know when you're giving your pen to some random stranger that they know first. Like, if you want to try and yank the cap off of a Kaveco, go for it. You're not going to get it, but I'm not going to be mad about it either. Um, maybe in the future, I'll just be like, here you go. There you go. You did it. Great job. You did it. I'm so proud of you. Um, but yeah, I these people. So I'm always like, it's a screw cap. It's a screw cap. And then every once in a while, I'll get, I'll hand like the Lamy 2000 to one of my coworkers, and they're like, they're learning. I'm like, you know, it's you can actually pull it. Oh, okay, cool. I have a lot of slip cap pens now, so. Oh, easy. It's like a regular pen. So I'm probably going to ink up this guy and bring it to work tomorrow. <laughs> My girls be like, that's, that's cool. But why? Why not? Well, if I make you laugh so hard, online just wait until we hang out and get coffee or something and i can make you laugh in person with my charisma and my jokes and the things i have to say well the homo sapiens those visconti are weird because it's that twist and pull sort of locking mechanism uh, so they're strange. It's it's understandable that that happens. Uh, I've had a lot of people ask me about Visconti and that sort of thing, and they're nice. They're nice pens. They're great. They're great for people. Um, I am happy that so I have. Pens do I use? I pretty much use. Gosh, I had, I don't know. If I'm gonna write. Man, I have so many pens. Uh, I'm like losing track in my my brain. Like what what do I use? Uh, depending on what I write. Oh, and that's everything. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. I have no idea what I'm saying anymore. You guys, I'm losing my mind. Hungry. I want to drink more beer, but I don't want to drink more beer because I want to go get Panda Express because Miss Marilyn Darling said Panda Express, and now I want Panda Express. It's right down the street. It's not that far away. Oh, Jacqueline, uh, I bought a little 10 pen case from Goulet. It's way smaller than I thought. I have little hands, you guys. I have, like, I would always joke, like, they were, they're a little bit bigger than our former president's hands, who, you know, I'm not a fan of his, but uh, I'm not really a fan of our current president either, but, you know, it was better than the other douche. Oh, sorry. Sorry, monetization. I hope douche is okay. But um, I have little tiny hands. Tiny, tiny hands. I'm six foot two. I've worn the same size shoes since I was 10. I've had the same size hands since I was 10. They're tiny hands. Um, but look how tiny this thing is. Little tiny pen, 10 pen case. Uh, the green interior is a lot more green than the other case I have. So I'm wondering if materials changed or what have you. But I got this. I got a bunch of little mini notebooks. I love these little mini notebooks. They're so useful. Good paper. And I got a uh, 
And I got uh, some other paper, just paper, paper, paper. Ooh, magnetic cap. I still think the Lamy 2000's click is the most satisfying sound of all time. So that's still my, my pick for... Yeah, not, no, not so much on that, but that click, when you're snapping that cap on, nothing's better. Uh, and stickers, I got... Um, so Drew Brown of Goulet Pens uh, just got a new puppy not too long ago named Felix. So I got a little Corgi sticker with the uh, 823 in his mouth. It's kind of sad because I miss my, um, I miss my, I miss the amber 823 that I had, but I don't miss the fine nib. I like the medium nib better, but I do miss that iconic brown one. The brown nib, the brown pen was really cool. But that's super cute. It's going on my water bottle. Um, I got a Goulet pen cast sticker to go on my water bottle. And then they gave me an extra sticker as well. So that's, Pretty much what I got from Goulet. And then the other thing was uh, Le Expensive Pen. I don't... Fun fact, other than uh, my Waterman's number seven, because you can arrange them in such a way that... Wait a minute. Wait a, wait a moment. Oh, I just put that back in the wrong place. All right. I was like, huh? Who's messing with my pens? Uh, you can arrange. The only rainbow thing I own. I made a whole post on Facebook about, you know, pride and all that stuff. Um, the only rainbow thing I have is if you arrange the colors. The Waterman's number seven, you can get a rainbow. Hey, but that's it. So, yeah. yeah, wait a moment. Who messed with these pens? Oh, wait, it was me messing with these pens all along. <laughs> Fernando, you're making your wife worry. You know? Honey, are you okay? It's pretty awesome though. It's a great fidget thing. Good night, Marilyn. Thanks for making me hungry for, uh, you know, Panda Express. Now I'm gonna go to Panda Express and eat that instead of making dinner here. Seriously guys, I I'm amazed. I, I think we got up to like 22 people watching this live stream. Um, this is probably, I can't guarantee anything. Probably the last live view you will see of this room. My, Like I said, my buddy will be back next week from New Zealand. He will be staying in this room. So I will be in my normal space with my normal pictures in the background like I have in all those other videos. So this is my last going of being here. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to... Looking forward to... No, no responsibilities. <laughs> There's responsibilities here. Got to take care of the animals. Um, but thanks, Jacqueline. Don't forget to hit that like button, guys. Um, I'm just, I'm very happy. That this has been a fun hangout. And I look forward to seeing uh, many people at the San Francisco Pen Show. And... Can I hit like too? No, you can't like your own thing. Darn. Uh, TTFN. See you later, Marilyn. Thanks, you guys. I am going to go buy a 
Americanized Chinese food because it sounds delicious. And uh, thanks so much for hanging out with me. If you want to check out other things, I have my Instagram at Craig Rockanova. I'm always on there. You can shoot me messages on there. I will respond to messages on there. Um, and uh, yeah, nice to see you too, guys. OC Mark, you have a wonderful night as well. Everyone, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for checking this video out. Um, please subscribe if you want to. I'm going to be giving away a lot of stuff in the future. There will be a lot more pens, modern pens. I'll probably give out a vintage pen at some point. Um, it's just, you know, it's it's an acquired taste for a lot of people getting into vintage pens. But stay tuned, you guys. I have a lot of more cool stuff coming your way. And uh, thanks for hanging out with me. All right. See you guys soon. Peace.